We are just seconds away uh, from the March employment report, and it's not like we're not going to be able to watch the reaction. The stock market might be closed, but we've got this futures, equity futures and bond futures. So obviously we needed to be here. We need to, to see exactly what the reaction is there. Our equity futures all in the red uh, just slightly uh, this morning. And maybe more importantly, let's look at, um, at the, the 10 year, two year. I'd have that ready to go. There you go. Right now, uh, 10 year. 336. Time for the report. Rick Santelli, what's the number? Yes, the March jobs report everybody's expecting. Uh, I'm, I'm monitoring the wires. It should be hitting, and here it comes. Expecting 230,000 non farm jobs, 236,000. 236,000, very close to expectations. And if you consider manufacturing, manufacturing was down 1,000 less than the four to 5,000 many were expecting. Let's get into the meat of this, shall we? The unemployment rate drops from 3.6 to 3.5, 3.5. The best it's been, or the lowest I should say it's been, was 3.4, that was January, unless there's any longer term revisions, up three tenths, up three tenths on average hourly earnings, that's a, a month over month level, that follows up Two tenths, and exactly as expected. And if you take a longer view, year over year on average hourly earnings, it's up 4.2 percent, one tenth lighter than expectations, four tenths lighter than the rear view mirror at 4.6. And 4.2 is the lowest level, uh, actually, uh, post-COVID. That's the lowest post-COVID level. It had been July of 22 at 4.3. We usurped that. That is significant. And if you look at the average weekly hours per employee, 34.4, that's one-tenth lighter than expectations, one-tenth lighter than the rearview mirror. And this is also equal to the shortest week, which was December of 22. And it's been steadily moving down. Uh, many employers probably don't feel like they need to overwork or get more out of every worker because it's more about layoffs and slowdowns at this point. Labor force participation. This is a biggie, huge, a new post-COVID high, 62.6%. 62.6, which is exactly what it was in March of 2020, right on the cusp of COVID. It was 63.3 in February, just before COVID. The underemployment rate, or U6, 6.7, that follows 6.8. The best or the lowest it's been is 6.5. And like the general unemployment rate, that was in December, the last month of last year. We see that the uh, interest rates, well, they have moved a bit higher. The cash market actually is open till noon, and yields have just popped to about 336. But the futures at the CME have also popped out. Futures are a bit higher. Uh, the markets are going to be thin. Many customers aren't going to be able to move any huge amount of size. But this Report is generally, generally about as expected. The two-month revision was worth 17000 We took away 17000 And if we put this in the context of yesterday's big revisions, benchmark revisions on initial and continuing claims, my feeling is the Fed ought to be paying a lot more attention to some of the issues that may be showing a, a, a slowdown uh, or at least a less tight labor market and Quickly here, I don't mean to take too much time. We're seeing revisions now. I said minus 17,000. Uh, let's put a face on that. So last month's 311,000 now moves to 326,000, which means the bulk of those revisions were in the previous month.